Hello everyone and welcome to section 7 where we're going to be looking at network sniffing and spoofing. So let us look at what we're going to be learning in this section. Alright, so we'll start off with network discovery. So in this uh, video we're going to be looking at how to discover devices connected to our network with a tool called NetDiscover. Alright, we'll then get started with the network sniffing process where I'll be explaining the fundamentals of sniffing and we'll get started with a network sniffing tool called TCP dump. We'll then move on to the second part of network sniffing where we'll be using Wireshark, which I'm sure probably most of you have already heard of, which is a fantastic network sniffing and packet uh, capturing tool or program. All right. We'll then move on to spoofing, more specifically ARP spoofing, where we'll be looking at the ARP spoofing process and how we can do it using a tool called ARP spoof, all right, to achieve a man in the middle uh, position. We'll then finish off with looking at uh, how to actually use the ARP poisoning attack method to get man in the middle access with a tool called Etacap. All right, so that is what we're going to be looking at in this section. So let's get started. In this video, we're going to get started with network discovery with NetDiscover. All right, so this is a really, really important stage, especially when it comes down to network sniffing and spoofing. So uh, essentially what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be uh, discovering the devices connected to our network. Now we looked at this very basically with Nmap where we could find out what devices were connected to our network and we could scan uh, for an entire range, all right, on our network. Now, as I said, we're going to be performing sniffing and spoofing attacks on our local layer network. So a net discover is a fantastic tool that will discover the devices connected to the network that you are connected to. All right, so uh, let's get started. Now by default, a uh, net discover is already pre-installed and pre-configured with Kali Linux, which is awesome. Okay, so it's really, really very simple to get launched. Uh, so just open up your terminal and you can just type in net discover. Now before we get started, I'm going to use the help menu because I want to explain some of the commands that are the most popular and what they all mean. Alright, so I'm going to hit enter and as you can see, it's going to give you this wonderful help menu. Fantastic. Now let's look at some of the commands that we're going to be using. One of the most important commands that you'll be coming across is the I command. The I command allows you to specify the network interface or the network device that you want to use to perform the scan. What do I mean? If you have a wireless uh, adapter, for example, a, an adapter that allows packet injection, you can specify that. If you're using Ethernet, like what we were using and the, probably what you'll be using, if uh, you're using a virtual machine, you will then specify that you want to use uh, the Ethernet zero interface. Or if you're using a Wi-Fi, adapter you can specify the WLAN 0 interface now uh, you might be a bit confused and you might be asking well how do I know what I'm using well all you have to do is just open up a new terminal and type in ifconfig all right so uh, as you can see this is our current interface and as you can see it's going to be labeled as Ethernet 0 that is the standard for all Ethernet connections uh, especially on Linux distributions so by default, we're using an Ethernet connection. So if I go to my interface here, and as you can see, I'm using a wired connection. Uh, so by default, on any virtual machine, uh, the default connection will be an Ethernet connection. So if you're using a wireless adapter, it will give you the interface name as WLAN 0. Okay, so you then specify it from there. All right, so we'll be looking at that with NetDiscover. Now moving on in terms of the commands, you then have the R command that allows you to specify a range of a network. So for example, if we wanted to specify a range of only a certain amount of devices on our network or a range of IP addresses on our network, we can do that. We'll be looking at that as well. You then have your file command, which is not that important, but it allows you to scan a list of ranges that is contained into a given file. So if you add a list of ranges in a text document, you can specify that text document to be scanned uh, using the L command. Uh, as for passive mode, this is again not very important. As you can see, this option is saying do not send anything, only sniffing. So essentially what this means is it's not going to send any type of protocol or any type of request to any device on the network to get more information about them. I'll be explaining this in a few seconds. All right, you can then specify a file with the M command that contains a known Macs. Now in this case, if you do not not familiar with what a Mac means, Mac is essentially the media access control uh, protocol that uh, essentially whose purpose is, uh, if you might be asking, the media access control address is a unique identifier that uh, essentially maps the device on the network and uh, it acts as, as an identifier of a device on a network. What do I mean? So for example, a mobile device could have a MAC address and that MAC address uniquely identifies it on the network. All right. So that the router or your portal or your gateway knows who it's communicating with. So let's say your phone on your networks sends a request 
to the router for a web page. Now your phone sends a request to the router. The router receives the request from a MAC address. All right. So now it, it knows that that MAC address came from what IP address. So it resolves uh, the, the device on the network. And then once it receives the web page, it sends it to that MAC address. Uh, and therefore it knows that device, that MAC address belongs to that device. Okay. So it's very important to understand that. So if you add a list of known Macs, you can also use that. Uh, as for the other commands, these are something that, that are not really touched in most cases, especially uh, in my case, since I've worked in the network administration uh, job before. Some of the most common ones are the ones I've just specified. So let's get started with some basic network discovery. All right. So main principle or aim here is to discover the devices connected to our network. Now, as I said, to get started, all you have to do is just type in net discover. All right. So net discover. Now we need to specify the interface that we're using to perform the scan. In this case, we're using the uh, I command and then we specify the interface name, which in our case is Ethernet zero. All right. And uh, if I hit enter, let's just perform this basic scan. What's going to happen is going to scan our entire network uh, for devices connected to the network with the Ethernet zero adapter. So I'm going to hit enter and the scanning process has begun and uh, just give it a few seconds. And there we are. So we have devices that are discovered. Now let's look at the information that is being displayed to us. So as you can see, it, it is going to be currently scanning and it will uh, continue scanning until you stop it or you halt the, the scanning process. And you can do that with the control plus C command on your computer. All right. So as you can see, it's going to tell you here that four captured ARP requests packets uh, from four hosts. All right. So if you're not familiar with what ARP is, ARP is the address resolution protocol. All right. So it is essentially an internet protocol whose purpose is to map the IP addresses to the machine addresses. All right. So essentially what's happening here is you're receiving and sending ARP requests to these devices and they're uniquely identifying themselves or they're identifying themselves. Uh, as I said, it's using the ARP protocol. Okay, so the information being sorted out here is given in forms of the IP address, which in this case is the local IP, very, very important information. You then have your MAC address, which gives you the MAC address, again, vitally important information. You have your MAC vendor and host names given right here. Okay, so essentially these are the names of the devices connected to your network. For more information, you can see that, uh, for example, here at the IP address, which is my default gateway, the 192.168.1.1, that is my router. As you can see, it is running TP link. So that is vital information that, uh, you know, if gathered can give you insight into how devices are arranged or what devices actually connected to the network and how they are configured with each other. All right. So uh, again, you can see that I have uh, other devices. Like, for example, this is my Windows workstation uh, right here. And this is the current uh, Windows computer uh, and more specifically the Kali Linux computer that I'm currently using. Now, you might be asking, uh, well, how do we scan for a range of addresses? Now, that is the next thing we're going to be doing. All right. So we're just going to cancel. We're going to stop this scanning process by hitting control plus C and we open up the net discover command again. Now to specify a range, if we just open up the help menu again, we can see that the option to specify a range is the R command. So let us do that right now. All right. So we're going to hit clear. And we're going to type in net discover. We specify our interface. It is vitally important that you always specify the interface you're using because you can choose to use a Wi-Fi adapter for your scanning, which will also discover other Wi-Fi uh, devices connected. All right. So a net discover I, which is Ethernet zero. We have selected our interface. Now we select the range. All right. So in this case, I'm going to scan my subnet that which is where my virtual lab is hosted. So in this case, you would find my Linux virtual machine. And if I had any other virtual machine running, like for example, my Windows 7 virtual machine, we would also be able to discover it here. You'll also see that it will discover some of my mobile devices that are connected to my subnet. All right. So my subnet is 192.168.1.1. 1 slash 24. That is how you specify a subnet. Now your subnet may be configured uh, completely differently. You, you could have configured it with a two or three or whatever you felt like. In my case, I have configured it this way. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hit enter and it's going to scan, scan the subnet of the IP range that I've specified. So I'm going to hit enter. And as you can see, the scanning process has begun. So just give it a few seconds and it's going to start gathering the devices that are connected to my subnet. Now, as you can see, I do not have my other router connected. I only have my default gateway, which is running on the sub subnet that I specified right here. So uh, 192.168.1.1. All right. So that is correctly configured under our subnet. And uh, that is how to perform some basic network discovery 
With NetDiscover, it is a fantastic tool that allows you to get an understanding of what devices are currently connected to your network and what their names are, what their MAC addresses are. 